coming out live. And there we are. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. This is stream number two on August 15th, 2021. And we're doing two days, four streams of uh, Julian Assange. And uh, we're having a discussion about a little bit about current events, but mainly focus around Julian Assange and uh, journalism, uh, free speech, uh, technology and whatnot, and the state of our governments. And uh, what we're doing is basically taking a look at um, some of the episodes from Julian Assange's The World Tomorrow. It's a 12 episode series that he put out on RT when it was held up in the Ecuadorian embassy, uh, asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy. And he was having interviews with some of the greatest minds of the planet, as well as some of the most controversial people on the planet, hitting up some of the main areas at the time and they've become more and more relevant uh, a lot of those episodes as you know nine years later because we're in 2021 right now so it's nine years wow 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 um so it's good to get the perspective and it's good to highlight uh julian assange again based on the court decision that was passed uh this week where the United States won um, their judgment on appealing Julian Assange's extradition based on uh, the reasons that uh, the initial UK judge gave because of medical reasons why uh, she would not agree to Julian Assange being extradited, which is, we looked at the summary of what took place uh, from the Duran in the last live stream which was earlier today, uh, a couple hours ago, we ended it. So this is our second live stream for today, and it's the second uh, two of four that we're gonna do regarding Julian Assange. Now, as we wait for notifications to go out, because sometimes Twitch has a hard time sending notifications twice in the same day, uh, if you're doing a couple of streams, uh, sort of back to back. We're not back to back, but we're only two hours apart. So we had a fair bit of people on the last stream, 50 plus people, um, when I checked uh, once anyway, uh, on the stream. Uh, so we'll give those people a little bit of time if they do wanna pop by. And while we wait for people to drop by, let me give you guys my little intro. Uh, if you wanna know what this work is about, I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. I don't put anything behind paywall. Everything's Creative Commons and it's layered on mathematics. And there's a lot of mathematics in what we're talking about because a lot of things that Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, and the cyberpunk community uh, programmers are talking about that is that we need to have anonymity, privacy, freedom, freedom of speech and freedom of movement and freedom of thought, freedom, uh, through technology by design it should not be mandates or laws the centralized power passes and the next puppet that comes in they can take those rights and they call them privileges now away from you these concepts of human life how we should be how we should exist should be in our societies by design and the only way that you incorporate that by design that we have freedom freedom of speech freedom of movement freedom of thought freedom of commerce freedom to live as individual human beings is through mathematics by design anonymity being a huge part of that right so that's where it connects up to the work that i'm doing uh, regarding the mathematics, which is mainly a central focus of the Patreon stuff that we're doing. Deep Flake, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Kaitsu, Katatsu, Katatsu, Katitsu, Kaitetsu, 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 Japanese. What percentage do you get from Twitch subscriptions? Uh, 50%. 50%. It's not the best. <laughs> Amazon is Amazon, right? Because Twitch is owned by Amazon. 
is it cyberpunk we're gonna do the cyberpunk first and uh, let me give you the link for the playlist oh no we're gonna do uh, uh, Jasinski first that's what we promised Cheryl that we would do okay so the cyberpunk Kitetsu Kitetsu thank you very much Kitetsu uh, and I believe that's Japanese yes so here's the playlist of Julian Assange's 12 uh, episodes that he did and then he put out two extended versions of the cyberpunk one we're gonna watch the original version of cyberpunk one okay so but we're gonna watch episode number two first Julian Assange's The World Tomorrow, Slavoj Zizinski, and David Horowitz. Okay. And then we'll watch the Cyberpunk Part 1. Uh, okay. Joe Chicho, on the topic of mathematics, did you hear the governor of Oregon has passed a law that suspends math and reading? Yeah. Proficiency as a requirement for high school graduates. Yeah. I linked that up on our Discord page. Uh, clown World joe clown world if i had any children and i'm recommending anyone that has any kids in centralized education indoctrination centers pull them out do whatever you need to and if i know a lot of people can't they can't homeschool begin the process of looking at alternative ways to educate children okay our education systems in canada and the united states have completely cra uh, collapsed they're garbage 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 think of it as this way if this is comes into personal finance if you're a family if you're raising children put the time and energy and the money the funds in to your kids early on educate them properly and in the in the back end you will reap the rewards hopefully right because they'll be educated they'll have free ability to have critical thought think for themselves know what life is about they won't be indoctrinated into a consumption idiotic uh way of being right so you put the energy in at the front end reap the rewards at the back end and will pay off tenfold thousandfold in the long run okay just letting you guys know it's clown world regarding centralized indoctrination centers cheryl it's okay if uh another is preferred I, i'm okay doing zinski uh cyberpunk is cool too cyberpunk is fantastic i like that those two episodes and the extended versions oh i mean uh cypher fun oh cypherpunk i seen crypto oh i sent crypto okay okay not cyberpunk but cypherpunk punk cypherpunk crypto cryptography meta dragons welcome back gang welcome back gang yes it's from one piece it's from one piece is it have you watched all the episodes 986 episodes or something now i've watched like two and i looked at how many there were and i said okay i can't do this now I'll, i'm gonna do it in my retirement and it'll be like three thousand by then or something <laughs> kititsu ki Kitet, I'm gonna hold on. Kitetsu, Kitetsu, is he the one that the main guy, the elasticy guy? Supness and take care of you after retirement. Indeed, if you if you raise if a family is tight, family is there for you. It's the, your safety net. It's the best safety net you could ever dream of, ever dream of joe a spokesman for the governor said that the new standard for graduation would help and benefit people of color if that ain't racist i don't know what is right and i really don't see how not being educated on two of the most important subjects helps anybody 100 percent joe and as far as i'm concerned that's the exact opposite of a school that i would set up the school i would set up math and english would be the only two mandatory courses the only two mandatory courses from grade one the grade one the only two mandatory courses you need not english but your natural language wherever you are where whichever part of the world your natural language in canada united states english at least english and mathematics everything else would be elective these morons are, are doing it the other way man insane 
I can't even use some of the words. It's around 900. It's Zor Zoro's Katana. It's Zoro's Katana. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, uh, Deep Flake. Science is... Mathematics is a language that science is built on, right? You give children the opportunity, the, 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 the choice to pick multiple different science courses as they're going through, as they're being educated, they will pick them. There is no doubt. Science involves everything in the world. Biology, chemistry, physics, those aren't the only ones. How about, how about providing electives, right? Where you don't just study physics. The physics, the way physics is taught is over the top. It's so, like in grade 11 in Canada, they throw everything at you, right? It's like you can't even make heads or tails out of anything. How about breaking these things down and saying optics, optics, harmonics. Forget physics in general. Put it on the physics. Teach them harmonics. That Make that an elective right the only two mandatory courses natural language and math let the kids decide what else they want to take okay for 12 years just imagine the caliber of a human being that would come out of 12 years of choosing their own destiny that's the school i would create okay and I'm working towards it, and I'm doing it slow, and I'm doing it online, and I'm hitting up the mathematics aspect of it. Okay. And if you want to support this work, Patreon is where you can support this work. It's probably the best place to do it right now. Okay. Uh, aside from that, I'm going to finish off the intro. Um, and that's about 12 minutes in. How many people we got here? Uh, I'm assuming notifications haven't gone out, gang. Uh, Stevie waves. Hey, Chicho, missed the one earlier today. Hoping to chill um, for this one. These streams are making my wisdom to <laughs> pain go much faster. Good, 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 good. Uh, deep flakes. History? No. Let them choose. Which history do they want? They they, they, they they say history. They teach history in school, in my part of the world. And then they teach you ha one year would be just this history. Wait a second, what if the kid's not interested in that? Right? What if they're not interested in that? Let them choose which part of history they want to study. Right now is a historical moment in time, right? Every moment is, but this is crazy stuff going on. Why wouldn't they want instead of history, study current events and then link it up to history? Right? Give them the choice. Kids are in in general, my experience, man. A lot of my students have been a lot smarter than a lot of the grown-ups I've ever met in my life. Okay. Meta Dragons. That makes very little logical sense, considering that mathematics is debatably the best way to understand your world. 100%. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even require math literacy anymore to graduate from Oregon. In Oregon. Is it Oregon? Da -da. Yeah, governor of Oregon. I would not live in Oregon. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Okay, sleeve waves. Hey, Chicho. Oh yeah, right there was some other mistake. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, gang, we are live streaming. We're gonna we're gonna start off li listening to stuff, and hopefully, people will roll in. Maybe notifications goes out. We are live streaming on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Chicho Live. C H Y C H O L I V V E V E. If you want to participate in these live streams in the chat, 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 Twitch is where you want to be at. Okay, gang. Uh, and gang, thank you very much. For the support on twitch and thank you very much for being here and mods thank you very much for taking care of business cheryl how you doing i do announce these live streams for some reason mine wasn't working before this one but it is what it is mines vk gap parlor bitcloud getter okay and we do have a discord page where you can join our discord server and talk about whatever you want you can go to our chat anytime you want and type an exclamation mark discord and the discord link will pop up right there okay and you can join it there for live streams where we don't have any visuals uh, we do upload the audio to soundcloud as a podcast and those podcasts should be available in your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this live stream to sensor 2 pitchute rumble and odyssey okay 
And thank you very much for the support on all those platforms, gang. It is because of your support that we're able to do this. And don't forget, as our chat says, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, and our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist on censor tube okay gang should we do which one of these let me link it up again here's the playlist we got two choices right now we've never down to two choices which ones we're gonna watch do you guys want to watch right now episode two with with sal sal salava slavic slavic zizinski or and David Horowitz, or do you want to watch episode eight? Okay, cyber cipher. Oh, it is cypherpunks, not cyberpunk. It's cypherpunks. Okay, so basically, some of the better known people in the tech community who have been building some of the platforms, some of the technology that we have been using to communicate okay cypher punks okay mainly focused on anonymity privacy cryptography eduardo says number eight Cy cypher punks sleepy waste says cheryl it looks like they want to go with the other one i agree history not as as in now but a grand grander scope and i would probably add philosophy philosophy sure Give them the choice of philosophy. Give them the choice of history of monetary policy. Okie dokie. Awesome, Cheryl. Meta Dragons. I would post, uh, I would posit that if people want to understand the reasons behind the oppressive and prejudicial, uh, prejudicial, prejudicial forces of government and society of the present learning history is a really good way to do so however history that is taught in centralized indoctrination is so distorted through textbooks that the individual who wants to learn the history has to learn how to fact check and learn bias training 100% agreed the history being taught in our centralized indoctrination centers it's garbage right they try to paint a picture of how our society is so grand or so great. It's indoctrination on a, on a level which is insane, insane, all right? Give kids the choice and break the history down. Break it down. You want to study Roman history? Don't study hundreds of years of Roman Empire. Pick certain eras. Do that for sure. Get a, get a broad perspective and then narrow it down, all right? Boom right contemporary history give broad speedy gonzalez style and then make certain connections certain spikes and connect the spikes all right but give the kids the choice to choose what they want to learn okay gang let's do this i am i am going to turn off the chat on the screen over here because it's gonna pop up on our side over here with the video I'm gonna kill my video right now and we're going into this view okay let's bring up this guy the playlist we're gonna pop out the chat the chat's gonna appear there so I'm gonna kill the chat dun, 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 dun. where are we I'm gonna kill this chat so chat's not going to pop up the notifications is up there that's fine i'm going to kill my audio i'm going to put my headphones on okay we're going with uh cypher punks episode number eight of julian assange's the world tomorrow i'm going to turn on the audio make sure my audio on the live stream is dead yep that's dead and we're going to go to episode eight okay and keep in mind in this playlist at the bottom there's an extended version of the first episode of episode eight part one and then episode nine is a two-hour one i believe i've watched these i was thinking about it. i mentioned that i watched them earlier on the stream i'm pretty sure i've watched them but i'll probably watch these later on uh again just because they're so long um 
won't get a chance to watch them during the live stream but maybe we will at some point so we're going to watch episode number eight let me make sure it's not okay uh let me kick up the audio on this actually it was where it was and i'm going to bring out the chat Boop. nice wonder if hal finney is in it i watched the cut i didn't know about that one i agree the longer version eduardo uh I'm, we're gonna do a sound check first okay so you guys let me know if the sound is okay let me turn on desktop audio i'm julian assange Roger, I'll get you into strength. audio okay gang it's about the same as last time i did mess around with a couple of things uh because i was using the computer after the live stream but it should be fine so what i'm going to do i'm going to kill the audio on this on my mic here i'm just going to listen to the desktop works yes what uh, year did this come out this came out in 2012 okay this came out in 2012 and make sure here we can scroll down 2012 june 5th 2012 so basically a little over nine years ago okay a little over nine years ago Gang, I'm gonna kill my audio. We'll discuss this after we listen to the episode. It's about 30 minutes. Editor of WikiLeaks, we've exposed the world's secrets. These documents belong to the United States government. Being attacked by the powerful. The United States strongly condemns. Hey, quit asking questions. He broke the law. Illegally shoot the son of a. For 500 days now, I've been detained without charge. But that hasn't stopped us. Black Jack! Today, we're on a quest for revolutionary ideas that can change the world tomorrow. A furious war over the future of our societies is underway. To most, this war is invisible. On the one side, a network of governments and corporations that spy on everything we do. On the other, the cypherpunks, virtuoso geek activists who make codes and shake public policy. This is the movement which spawned WikiLeaks. I am joined by three cypherpunk friends. From Germany, Andy Muller Magoon, from France, Jeremy Zimmerman, and from the United States, Jake Appleborn. I want to ask them, is the future of the world the future of the internet? I, I want to look at the three basic freedoms. So when I interviewed the head of Hez Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrullah had become... Where's that fucking drone strike? <laughs> there was a question. What's that up there? Well, he has his own kind of house arrest as well, because he can't, can't leave his secret location. But um, I'm not sure that I would make that comparison. Please don't make that comparison. No, you can edit that out, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so, so I want to go, go back to these, these three fundamental freedoms, freedom of communication, freedom of movement, and freedom of economic interaction. So if we look at the transition of our global society onto the internet, when we made that transition, the freedom of personal movement is unchanged, essentially. The, the freedom of communication is enhanced tremendously in some ways in that we now can communicate to many more people. On the other hand, it is also tremendously degraded because there is no privacy anymore. And so our communications can be spied on and are spied on and stored and as a result can be used against us. Privacy is it, available, it is, but it degraded. comes at a cost. Yeah. Yeah, so in this sort of militarization of these sort of interactions. And our economic interactions have had suffered precisely the same consequences. Julian, it's not wrong what you're saying, but I'm not sure you can really distinguish between point two and three. Uh, because the internet, as we have it today, is infrastructure for our social, our economic, our cultural, our political, or our things. Certainly, so for freedom however, of however, the communication architecture is the money is just bits. I mean, this is just a usage of the internet. Yeah. And Andy, you're, you've mm. studied for years um, mm. cryptographic telephones, secure phone calls, sort of mass surveillance is occurring in, in mm. relation to uh, telecommunications. Tell me, what is the state of the art as far as the 
government intelligence um, bulk surveillance industry is concerned? Well, yes. Mass storage, meaning um, storing all telecommunication, uh, has become... So that's all, all voice calls and... Yeah, all voice calls, all internet connections. Actually, what you have to see is the if you compare the military budget to the cost of surveillance and the cost also of cyber warriors, uh, normal weapon systems cost a lot of money. If you compare that to cyber warriors or to mass surveillance, like uh, that is very cheap. That's super cheap compared to just one aircraft. One military aircraft costs you between hundred million. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there are two questions here. We also have this example of uh, Eagle, the system mm -hmm. sold by the French company Amesis that was mm -hmm. sold to, to Qaddafi's Libya. Mm -hmm. And on the, the document that, you know, the commercial yeah. document, it was written uh, yeah. nationwide interception mechanism. Yeah. That's a strategic so a approach. a big yeah. box that you, you yeah. put somewhere and you just listen to all your people communication. So yeah. we, we can discuss about the technology, and I'm, I'm in, interested very much by that. And, and this... this, we, this Ten years ago, this was seen to be a fantasy. This was yeah, seen yeah. to be something so, that only, only paranoid the, the, people believed in. But yes. the, the costs of doing it have now decreased to the point where uh, even countries like Libya, with relatively few resources, was doing it with French technology. Exactly. So now, now that's a fact. Technology enables total surveillance of every communication. Then there is the, 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 the other side of that coin, is what we do with it. Uh, we could admit that for what you call the tactical one, there are some, indeed, some legitimate use. Mm -hmm. you know, investigators investigating mm -hmm. on bad guys and yeah. networks of bad guys and so on mm -hmm. may need, under the supervision of the judicial authority, uh, to be able mm -hmm. to use such, um, such tools. But the question is, yeah, wh where to draw this judicial supervision? Where to draw the, the control that the citizens can have over the use of those technologies? And this is uh, a policy issue. And when we get to those policy issues, and we were evoking that earlier, we, you have politicians that are asked to just sign something mm -hmm. and don't understand the underlying technology. Which is why we see so much hype about cyber war, is that some people that mm -hmm. seem to be in the authority about war start talking about technology as if they understand yeah, it. Exactly. And you have all these people talking about cyber war, and not one of them, not a single one, is talking about cyber peace building mm -hmm. or anything related to peace mm -hmm. building. They're always talking about war because that's their business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to rope technology into that. And so when we have no control of our technology, yeah. we have these people that wish to use it for, for their ends, for war specifically, that's a recipe for some pretty scary stuff. I, so I see that... Uh there's now a militarization of cyberspace because we have inter interception across all national border points. Yeah. Uh, Target and, and, and we, we have mm, militarized computer hackers operating on bulk with programs to attack sections of the internet and spy on sections of the internet. May I oppose uh, about the use of hackers in this context? Yes. You're Please talking about so. soldiers using computers soldiers as and military means. Yeah. This is not hacking. Yeah, hacker. And this is not hackers. Maybe. All right, let's not, get, let's, not get, let's not get into the hacker definition. Well, no, I mean, but, but the point, the point is that we have civilian lives. We don't, we don't see tanks yeah. coming into the lounge. Well, this may be a special lounge room, actually. But mm -hmm. we, we, most, most people <laughs> don't see tanks or bugs mm -hmm. coming into their lounge room normally, mm -hmm. uh, or even down, their, even down their local road. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we take our personal lives and we put it all, we put it all on Facebook. We communicate using the internet. We communicate using mobile phones, which are now meshed to the internet. And the military has control, or the intelligence agencies have control of that data and are studying that data. So this is some kind of militarization of civilian life. Absolutely. But there is a real question on, on whether or not we should um, uh, regulate the... Um, uh, the, the, the fact of just buying and owning those technologies or, mm -hmm. uh, or so using the, the bulk it. interception kits that can intercept half a country like, or a city. Uh, or a, a nuclear weapon. You cannot yeah. sell that easily a nuclear weapon. And uh, some countries who may want to build one may have problems or, or, or something. Mm -hmm. And that's um, the technology that is regulated and not the use that is being done with it with, mm -hmm. when we talk about weapon systems. So I think the debate might be about uh, whether or not these technologies should be considered as war materials. Yes, it's weapons. Weapons. Equipment it's is, war. is weapons, and, and, and it's, it's, there's no question that it is a weapon mm. in places like Syria or in places like Libya. Yeah. 
right? They specifically used the surveillance equipment to target people politically sure. in, in Libya. They targeted people in the United Kingdom uh, using French equipment that would be illegal to run in France, and they, uh, they sold well, it they knowingly. They would never do that, right? Well, they were caught with their own <laughs> internal documents in the spy files, right? State-sponsored surveillance is indeed uh, a, a major issue. It challenges the, the very structure of our democracies and the way, the, the way, the way it functions. Mm -hmm. But um, is it the, the proper time now to, to evoke also that there is um, private uh, surveillance and potentially for private mass uh, collection of data? And actually, just, just look at Google. Mm -hmm. Google knows, if you're a standard Google user, yeah. Google knows who you're communicating with, who you know, uh, what you're researching, potentially your sexual orientation, your Google uh, knows religious, more about you than you know yourself, more about than your you. mother, yeah. and maybe more th than yourself. Yeah. Google knows when you're online and when you're not. Well, did, do you know what you looked for at two years, three days, and four hours ago? <laughs> well, you don't know. Google knows. No, <laughs> no but I, I, actually, I, I, I try not to use Google anymore uh, for these very reasons. Mm. But what I'm saying is, it's not only the, the state-sponsored su surveillance. It's the, 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 the question of privacy, the way da data is being handled by third parties, and the, mm. the, the mm. actual knowledge that people have over what is being made mm. with the data. Can most, you talk, most can you talk about Facebook as well, Jeremy? Mm. Well, I. Actually, I don't use Facebook, so I, I don't know much about it. But no, w w with Facebook, you see the, the, the very same behavior of users who are very happy to, to, to hand out any kind of personal data. And uh, of course, when you see teenagers you know, sending pictures of them being drunk or, or, or whatever, they may not have this uh, vision that it means the, the whole rest of the world, potentially for a very, very long period of time that will have access to this data. And so Facebook makes its business by blurring this line between privacy, friends, publicity, and uh, is uh, even uh, storing the data when you think that it is only meant for your friends and the people you love. This, this line between government and corporation, I mean, this is blurred. I mean, if you look at the, yeah, the expansion in the, mm -hmm. in the military contractor sector, uh, in the West over the past 10 years, the National Security Agency, which was the bi biggest spy agency in the world, uh, it, it, had, it had 10 primary contractors on its books that it worked with. Now it has, two years ago, it has over 1,000. So, so there's a spreading out, a smearing out of the border between, between and, what is and, government and, and, and uh, what is... It can be argued that uh, yeah. the US uh, spying agencies have access to all of Google stored data well, they and, do. and they all do. of Facebook data. So in a way, Facebook and Google may be extensions of these agencies. Do you have a subpoena? Subpoena? I mean, well, I the, know that the we just We just got two yes, yesterday. In, in our Twitter case so far, which unfortunately I can't really talk about because I don't actually live in a free country, which is a really, I mean, it's a thing, right? Because these, these orders also have gagging, a gag component. Yeah, so but that's been found to be unconstitutional. So let's, it? well, maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, mm. um, you know, for the Twitter case, it's public that we lost mm. the stay where we said that disclosing this data to the government would do irreparable harm, and they can never forget this data once they receive it. And, you know, the government said, yeah, well, your stay is denied. You have, Twitter must disclose this data. And, you know, we're in the process of appeal specifically about the secrecy of docketing. And I can't talk about that because we're in the process of appeal. But, but as it stands right now, the court found that they said on the Internet that, 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 that you have no expectation of privacy when you willingly reveal information to a third party. And by the way, everyone on the Internet is a third party. And they said it was a one-to-one -one map with banking privacy and with, you know, <coughs> dialing a telephone. You willingly disclose the number to the phone company by using it. And you knew that, right? By using the telephone, you obviously are saying, I have no expectation of privacy by typing those numbers. I mean, there's even less explicit connection to the machine. People don't understand how the Internet works. They, they don't understand the telephone networks either. But the courts have consistently ruled that this is the case. It's absolute madness to imagine that we give up all of our personal data to these companies and then the companies have essentially become privatized secret police, where in the case of Facebook, we have democratized surveillance and instead of paying people off the way the Stasi did in your country, mm. we, we reward them as a, as a culture by, you know, they, they get laid now.
You know, they report on their friends and then like, hey, yo, so-and-so got engaged. Oh, so-and-so broke up. Oh, I know who to call now, right? And this is the difference between a privacy yeah. by policy and a privacy by design approach yeah. to, to actually creating secure systems. Yeah. I mean, when you're trying to target people and you know you live in a country that explicitly targets people, you know, you, if Facebook put its servers in, in Gaddafi's Libya or it put it in uh, Assad's Syria, that would be uh, absolutely negligent. So knowing that that's reality, that these companies have some serious ethical liability that stems from the fact that they're building these systems and they've made the economic choice basically to sell their users out. And this isn't, this isn't even mm. a technical thing. This isn't about, it isn't about technology at all. It's about economics. Mm. And they have decided that, that, that it is more important to collaborate with the state and to sell out their users and to violate their privacy and to be a part of the system of control, to be paid back for being a part of the surveillance culture, to be part of that, that, that culture of control, than to be resistant to it. And so they build it, they become a part of it. They're complicit and liable. I, I want to look at this, this what I see as a, as a, a difference between a, a US um, cypherpunk perspective and a, um, a, the European perspective, which is, I think is quite interesting. So the US Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. Mm -hmm. I mean, just recently watching some footage that a friend shot in the US on the right to bear arms, and so right above a firearms store, it's democracy locked and looted. <laughs> and and that that's the, the way you ensure that you don't have a totalitarian regime is that people are, are armed and if they're pissed off enough, uh, then they simply take their arms and they retake control uh, by force. Mm -hmm. So if we look back to this declaration that code making, or providing um, mm -hmm. secret cryptographic codes that the government couldn't spy on was in fact a munition and this big war that we fought in the 1990s to try and make cryptography available to everyone, which we largely won, actually. In, in so the West? Yeah, in the West, in which the we West. largely won, and it's in, in every every browser, now perhaps being backdoored in different kinds and subverted in different kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. um, that this notion of you cannot trust a government to implement the policies that it says that it's implementing, and so we must provide the underlying tools, cryptographic tools that we control as a sort of use of force in that a, a government, no matter how hard it tries, if the ciphers are good, uh, cannot break into your communications directly. Well, maybe of, maybe you can put a bug in your house or whatever. Well, maybe yeah, the force of authority or, is derived from violence. One must acknowledge with cryptography, no amount of violence will ever solve a math problem. Exactly. And this is the important key. It doesn't mean you can't be tortured. Hmm. It doesn't yeah, mean that they can't try to bug your house or subvert it in some way, but it means if they find an encrypted message, it doesn't matter if they have the force of the authority behind everything that they do. They cannot solve that math problem. Hmm. And that, that, this is a thing, though, that is totally non-obvious to people that are non-technical, and it has to be driven home. Hmm. If we could solve all of those math problems, it would be a different story. And, of course, the government will be able to solve those math problems if anyone could. But that's the difference, right? It's actually a thing. But it's just, a, it's a, just a fact. That it just happens to be a fact about reality, such like that you could build atomic bombs, that there are exactly. mass problems that you mm. can create that even the, the strongest state cannot directly, directly break. And I yeah. think that was tremendously appealing uh, to Californian libertarians mm. um, and others who believed in this sort of democracy locked and loaded. And here, here was a very intellectual way of doing it, you know, of couple of individuals with cryptography standing up to the full power um, mm. of the strongest superpower in the world. And we're still doing that a little bit, but I, I have, a, have a view that mm. the likely outcome is that those are really tremendously big uh, economic forces and tremendously big political forces, like Jeremy was saying, and that uh, the, the natural eff efficiencies of these technologies compared to the number of human beings uh, will, mean, will mean that slowly we will end up into a global to totalitarian surveillance socii society. Mm. By totalitarian, I mean a total surveillance. And that perhaps the, the, there will just be the last free living people. And these last free living people uh, are those people who understand uh, how to mm. use this uh, cryptography to defend against this complete total surveillance. Are, are we headed for that sort of scenario? But first of all, if you, you look at it from a market perspective, I'm convinced that there is a market in privacy mm. that has been mostly left unexplored.
Mm. So maybe there will be an economic drive mm. for companies to develop tools that will give users the, the individual ability to control their data and communication. Maybe this is one way that uh, we can solve that problem. I'm not sure it can work alone, but this may happen and we, we may not know it yet. Um, also, it is interesting to see um, what you're describing is the, the, the power of the, the hackers, in a way. Uh, hackers to the primary sense of the term, not, not a criminal. A hacker is a, is a technology enthusiast, is somebody who likes to understand uh, how technology works, not to be trapped into technology and make it work better. Like, I suppose that you too, when you were f five or seven, you had a screwdriver and tried to open devices to understand what it was like inside. No? Mm -hmm. So this is what being a hacker is. And ha hackers built the internet um, for many reasons, well, also because it was fun, and um, have developed it, and have given the internet to, to everybody else. So companies like Google and Facebook saw the opportunity to build uh, business models based on capturing users' personal data. But still, we see a, a form of power in the, the hands of hackers. And what is of my um, primary interest uh, th these days is that we see these hackers um, gaining power even in the, the, the political arenas. This political rad radicalization of internet youth over the past two years, especially. Um, you've been all over the world talk, talking about Tor, talking uh, to people who want anonymity, want privacy in relation to their own government. I mean, you must have seen in many different countries this, this phenomena. Is it something significant? Sure. I mean, I think it's absolutely significant. I went to, to Tunisia after Ben Ali's regime fell. And you see that there's a sort of awakening about that. I think that you're wrong to say that it just happened in the last couple of years, and I'm sure. sorry to do this to you on your own show, but you know, you you are part of the radicalization of my generation, right? I'm like a third generation cypherpunk if I if I were in that, and you know, the work that you and Ralph did on the the rubber hose file system was part of what inspired me to to work on crypto systems, and you know, the the crypto. Uh, file system he wrote was in response to things like the you know the regulatory investigative powers in the United Kingdom where the, basically the state has decided negative regulation is the solution to cryptography where mm. they can you know you know take take your password of course in in Julian's case when they mm. created this it was because oppressive regimes would torture people for passphrases so you had to be able to give up different passphrases in order to comply with their torture and and I realized when I saw that this existed that you could use technology to empower everyday people to change the world and the cypherpunks going back, I mean, this is, this is really the, it goes far, far back. You know, the old mailing list, the cypherpunk mailing list with Tim May and reading your old posts on the cypherpunks mailing list. I mean, that's what started a whole generation of people really becoming more radicalized because people realized that they weren't atomized anymore and that they could literally take some time to write some software that if someone used it, they could empower millions of people. And, and there are just some unintended consequences with how that played out. Yeah. So because the people that created Google, they didn't start out to create Google to create the greatest surveillance machine that ever existed. But in effect, that is what has been created. And as soon as people start to realize it, they'll start sending in those national security letters. Mm. Right? I think there are three crucial points in what you, you, you just said. Um, just three? <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> among others. One of them is um, authoritarian regime. And uh, the powers that authoritarian regime have in an era uh, of digital technologies. In the, the case of the Ben Ali regime, it is obvious, uh, in so many regimes uh, as of today, it is obvious that you can uh, decide what people can learn about or who they can communicate with. And this is of tremendous power. And this should be opposed. And the internet, mm -hmm. a free internet, is a tool for opposing that. Um, Another that you, 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 well, that's your area of expertise. Uh, and it's building tools. And building tools to, to, to building better technology, technology that can try to root around such problems as censorship. But basically building tools that are part of that infrastructure that help us um, uh, topple dictators like that. And yet another issue um, 
is the political storytelling, uh, the, the pretexts that are used every day uh, by politicians, uh, through the media, mm. are we all going to die of terrorism, therefore we need a Patriot Act, mm. uh, child pornographers are everywhere, there are pedo-Nazis all over the internet, therefore we need uh, censorship. <laughs> uh, Those artists, damn pedo-Nazis. Pedo-Nazis, yeah. Uh, um, ped Pedonazi.com is reserved already. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, artists are going to die and there won't be cinema anymore, therefore mm. we have to give Hollywood the power to censor the internet mm -hmm. and so on and so on. So, um, I I think here again, the internet is a tool, uh, is a, internet may be the antidote to that political storytelling. Uh, the political storytelling relies on emotionality and relies on the, the media term that is of extremely short uh, span. Uh, one information appears and disappears 24 hours afterwards and is replaced by another and, and, and so on. With the internet, uh, I got the feeling that we are uh, we're, we're building what I call uh, internet time. Uh, as the great internet never forgets, mm -hmm. we can build over years, day after day, dossier, uh, and we can uh, elaborate. We can analyze. This is what we've been doing for the last three years with ACTA, and so we built our own political line mm -hmm. with internet time, with uh, precise analysis, with uh, hard work. Uh, with connecting uh, people together to participate in that. We've, we've won the, the narrative, but behind the scenes, secret bilateral treaties have been s set up, which yeah. are achieving the same result anyway. It's just, it's just subverted the democratic uh, process. Uh, one thing that I think really has to be pointed out <laughs> is that, you know, and the people that are fighting against ACTA are, in fact, they are using technology and, and the technology enables them to resist. But it is, in fact, the agency of everyday people that is important. To, to understand here, and, and techno babble is not the thing that is important. What, what matters is people actually getting involved in that narrative and changing it. Well, they still have the power to do so. And, and the human aspect of that is, in fact, the most important part of that. And the fact that WikiLeaks has released documents that enable that, that it is the information sharing that is important. But it is also the people that take that important information and actually move it. Because there is at least the, 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 the argument that we do live in a democracy, that we are free, that it's supposed to be that we are governed mm. through consent. And so if, if, if everyone understands what is going on and we find that it is not something we consent to, then it is very difficult to keep up that and just pass those as laws and do it without the consent of, the, of exactly. those that are governed. It's about I increasing the political costs of taking those bad uh, decisions for the ones who take them. Yeah. And we can do that collectively with a free internet as long as we have it be between our hands. So, before you go to go. negative, please. <laughs> Audio. Let's turn that off. Amazing discussion. Amazing discussion. Agreed? That was great. The internet is the antidote. The internet is the antidote and the poison if we're not careful, right? It's uh, just like any medicine. Dosage matters, right? Dosage matters. That was great indeed. Fantastic. Um, part two is fantastic as well as it continues on with it. Um, and everything that they're seeing is on point. Boom, 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 boom. Where we are right now. What were the three things Julian Assange was saying are the key to freedom, right? To what it means to be alive. The travel, communication, finance, right? Right now, Travel has been limited by our centralized governments. Communication is 100% surveilled. Censorship up the yin yang, right? Censorship up the yin yang. And on the finance side, we got a lot of games going on with uh, currencies and whatnot. And the M1 numbers in the United States, M2 numbers in the United States, discontinued. Boom. Over the top, right? That is a battlefront. 
Okay. Sleepy waves. On a basic level, how do you protect ourselves from these data consuming technocrats? Uh, by design, there are websites out there, like ProtoMail is a website where uh, all your email is encrypted. Okay. So ProtoMail is a place uh, where you can get an email account. It costs money, it's not free. It's not very much. I think it's like $20 a month or something like this or $15 a month. And your communication is 100% encrypted. Proto-mail was started off with um, Le Le Leverson. He had an email account where the United States or email server where the United States, I believe, I'm going by memory again, where the United States government said, we want the encryption keys to this. And he refused to give them the encryption keys and they forced them to shut down right so Le laval level levinson I'm brutalizing the name probably not pronouncing it right he folded his company okay because he refused to give up the code to his clients uh communication okay and then he started proto mail with i believe other investors and stuff right he started proto mail somewhere else where they can't be touched so there are there are platforms popping up now that uh, are providing anonymity privacy there is um there's alternatives coming up to twitter and facebook right like they're under threat facebook and twitter seriously disclaimer family has puts on twitter they are under threat in five to ten years times twitter and facebook might not exist twitter is going to be the first one to go by the way my my guess is right but there are social platforms that are 100 percent encrypted right or popping up they're coming online so they just have to be um adopted with by more people meta dragons i just uh reinstalled firefox and make duck duck go my default search engine that's a good baseline in my opinion indeed and once i started using duck duck go took me a few weeks couple of months two three months to transition away from google but once i started using duck duck go you'll never go back to google thank you very much for the follow akm6009 all right Google, you only use for certain things that DuckDuckDo doesn't have the features yet, right? Once it gets the features, Google is just out, right? Sleep away. You got to move away from uh, Twitch, Chicho. This is owned by Amazon. Indeed, indeed. Let's let's see how, where the video sharing platforms, the live streamings, work out. Rumble just kicked it up huge, right? I haven't tried out Rumble with their live streaming, but for me i'm okay with decentralizing and bringing another live streaming platform online live streaming to both and if one of them starts censoring you just drop that one and go to the other one right um so right now the technocrats in silicon valley there's a reason why they've taken over most western governments and they're trying to force their technology onto everyone is because they're scared shitless there's disruptive innovation coming on with the mindset of what we just watched right now as the building block for their platform right they a lot of people sort of sat back and sort of went okay everybody knows what's important what needs to happen for us to have freedom and then silicon valley came along monopolized the whole damn thing all the different platforms and then um commodified it right put it on wall street and the only thing that mattered was money do you have any idea how many millions of hackers around the world apple google microsoft twitter facebook these companies have pissed off man i would not want to be in their shoes right now because there's a lot of people that are pretty damn pissed as to what's been going on and there are things coming online and my money's on them my money's not on 
the technocrats in Silicon Valley. They can kiss my ass. Kaitetsu. Most people I know don't really have an issue with privacy. They just say they have nothing to hide. No matter what the what I say, they don't listen. the the best The best reply to those people that say I have nothing to hide is so I'm not worried about uh, privacy. It's like it's like saying I have nothing to say, so I don't care about censorship, right? Something along those levels, right? I have nothing important to say, so I don't care about free speech right that's that's the kicker that's their mentality and they're dum-dums they're they're useful idiots for fascist regimes right sleep away chicho yeah but just like the video was saying these technocrats have obtained so much power they can hire anybody and all the infrastructure here's the kicker sleepy waves the guy who hacked in to the cryptocurrency server and stole right made 600 million dollars disappear right the next day he came out and said i don't want this money i'm not doing this for money i did it to show vulnerability in the system and return the money now the exchange gave him five hundred thousand dollar reward for finding this vulnerability but the guy in his statement came out five hundred million of five hundred thousand six hundred million he was sitting on untraceable he could have got away with 600 million but he didn't care about the money in his statement he said i don't care about money i'm not doing this for the money right there are a lot of people out there that cannot be bought okay more than what the technocrats and uh, and the propagandists and centralized power would like us to believe there are people out there that cannot be bought julian assange was one of them right you can bet your ass they made them offers why did the google ceo uh schmidt fly over to talk to google uh to talk to julian assange this was a few years ago before the centralized state really kicked it into high gear right he went up there the odds are he made julian assange an offer and julian assange told him to go fuck himself right that's probably what happened okay do you seriously think the centralized governments could buy Julian Assange for anything right there are people out there that cannot be bought and monetary gain is not the f reason their function for existence okay they are the ones that need our support and uh, they are the true warriors and they will be the last man standing okay and that video was 10 years ago imagine now imagine now indeed Takeda, how are you doing? I wish I had a cigar right now, smoking it away again. So that was a fantastic, fantastic discussion. Okay. Where we go on, we go all. Do you believe in the rape allegations? No, the garbage. That's already been proven to be garbage, by the way. Uh, where we go. It, like it came out, it was lies. Like just pure propaganda. And I was talking with people at the time friends and stuff that were saying oh he's he's a rapist he's this, he's this i'm like you guys are morons right people that were regurgitating cnn and abc and bb bbc and the guardian and stuff morons and i they're friends some of them close some of them not so close right and in their faces i call them morons right because they were morons and I would recommend to I recommend that all of them, anyone that was regurgitating any garbage that mainstream propagandists were spewing, that they stop reading The Guardian, watching the BBC or CNN, stuff like this. And there were some of them got offended. Oh, don't tell me what to do. I go, well, you're a moron, obviously. So you're you're with the fascist. You're the useful idiot. You if you if you're if you if people are spewing bullshit about a truth teller for me i don't hold back right that's the kicker that's the kicker right rank i missed it how long till you upload it <laughs> um, a few days man it's going to be a week or so okay it's going to be a week here's a playlist it was episode number eight that we watched here's a playlist episode number eight that we watched Takeda, thanks. Just uh, listening to you. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, gang, uh, 
Cheryl, I'm assuming you're still here. Maybe you, you, you've, you've gone gardening, which is a great thing to do. By the way, gang, I got cheese, grapes again from our patio, and I eat a fig already. Got another fig going. Should we cut this fig? Let's have another fig. These are figs from our tree garden. Yep, still here. Awesome. So should we do episode two? And then we're going to watch the second part of the cypher punk episode, episode nine. We'll do it tomorrow. But how about we watch episode number two with Zizinski and Horowitz. This is our fig. We showed this yesterday. It was super delicious. Whoop. Let's put it the right side up. <laughs> I'm laughing too hard. It's not focusing. Like, seriously, you go like this to a fag and you lick it and eat it. Dada, well done. Joe, as soon as the stream ends, you can rewatch the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. As soon as the stream ends, you can rewatch the whole thing. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I totally forgot. Where do you read news? Oh, man. Kitsutsu, I got. I'm sharing the places where I acquire my news on our Discord page. Discord. If you go to our Discord server, the link is right there. Right, you can punch an exclamation mark Discord in our chat on Twitch anytime you want, right? Even when not live streaming, you get our Discord page. You can go there and um, there'll be a little welcome message if you're going to join the uh, server and uh, you can pick your reactions just for fun. But there is economics folder, personal finance folder, politics folder, news folder. There's a lot of people sharing a lot of information. And I share whatever I think that is important to share. Or it could be a soundbite, it could be an in-depth article, in-depth video, lectures, and we've got lectures and mathematics and education and all that jazz. A lot of folders. Okay. Sleepy Way says, let's do episode two. Let's do the uh, episode two. Eduardo, wow, that's the fig. And gang, don't forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Sensor 2. Dada, have not seen a fresh green fig before. It was amazing. Inside out flowers, the sex organs of flowers. Your uh, of plants, you're like that's what you're eating. Power is the skin hard? No, not really. It's it's it's, it's pretty soft, right? It's hard in the inside. The inside, those are like the um, what do you call it? The petal, a uh, pet petals, petal stools. <laughs> I forget what they're called in flowers. And then the skin is that, and the skin's not hard. Do I have any books that talk about capitalist power? I recommend going to Jonathan Nitsan's um, website. Okay. Mm, it's called, uh, what's it called? Capital, I think it's called Capitalist Power, to tell you the truth. Um, he, he came up with uh, the concept with another professor from Israel. They came up with the concept of uh, differential accumulation. Okay. And uh, they have a website and there's a forum there where people are talking about capitalist power and people are writing articles constantly regarding capitalist power. That's where the concept is really being discussed um, economically. Anyway, it's pretty important. If you let me know, Sleepy Waves, I'll link it up in our Discord for you. Okay. Rank. What form of financial support would you prefer the most? sub on twitch patreon i i would prefer patreon tell you the truth because um twitch is takes half the funds patreon takes 10 to 15 percent after everything's said and done all right so there's more bang for your buck on patreon and thank you for thinking about it by the way okay thank you for thinking about it gang let's watch the second episode i'm going to take off the chat off the screen here that way it doesn't interrupt with the video okay mm, let's go chat box down and i'm going to switch up my 
video here. Do you refer uh, to any astral or prediction stuff? Um, astrology? No, not really. Not really. Uh, follow the money and you can predict anything you want. Okay, sleepy waves. Chicho, I re uh, uh, researched it up. It looks like he has a book, um, Capital as Power, a study of order and creator. Indeed, that's the one you want, right? A study of order and creator. Read his article, Disrupt uh, Differential Accumulation. Very good. And I've, I've read a few of his articles that they put out and they present the data and other people that are sharing some of the articles on that, on that forum that he has. Fantastic. Okay. I haven't read his book yet. I communicated with him. I put out a video uh, regarding his stuff and sent him a link to it. And he sent me feedback and I communicated with him a little bit. Fantastic person. Really. That's what an educator should be right jesus triple gemini <laughs> always cracks me up no wonder you love to look at that every day indeed thank you very much for the follow the vaccines don't know no. <laughs> awesome name okay gang um i'm gonna turn off my audio turn on the uh desktop audio i'm turning off my audio we're gonna go watch episode two of julian assange's the world tomorrow and we'll discuss it afterwards okay and part two of the cypher funk we're gonna watch tomorrow okay so this is going to be about another half an hour i guess I'm Julian Assange. Roger, I'll get you into space. Editor of WikiLeaks, we have exposed the world's secrets. These documents belong to the United States government. Been attacked by the powerful. The United States strongly condemned. Hey, hey quit asking questions. We broke the law. Illegally shoot the son of a b For 500 days now, I've been detained without charge. But that hasn't stopped us. Fight Today, we're on a quest for revolutionary ideas that can change the world tomorrow. Today, I am joined by an intellectual superstar, the Slovenian philosopher Slavoj Žižek, a former anti-communist dissident, now turned self-described communist. Together, we call David Horowitz, a former left-wing radical and Black Panther ally, now a fiery right-wing Zionist. I want to know what they think about the future of Europe and the United States. The conversation becomes heated. Zizek has to be physically restrained. We shout, rant, and talk calmly about Nazis and Palestinians, Black Panthers and Israelis, about Obama, Romney, and Stalin. David, you describe yourself as a conservative, and Slavoj, you describe yourself as a communist. But nonetheless, both of you uh, have had a picture of Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin don't, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. I'm, Stalin I'm, I'm, in I'm in the middle of the show. It's going to be a, about an hour. Yeah, bye. I, I can't. I can't talk to you. I got. This is an international show. Okay. All right. Go ahead, David. Can you tell me what do you mean by conservative, and why do you have a picture of Stalin? Well. The, the picture of Stalin that was on my office wall was uh, his death. And I'm a conservative because the uh, leftists, uh, utopians, have no idea of what human nature is. Uh, and therefore, when they get the power, they're faced with a big problem, which is that people don't go along with their program. And so they kill them or, and put them in gulags. and. Uh, the, 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 the problem with the utopian idea is the idea. Sorry? Okay. Uh, first, why Stalin? Precisely to remind me, and here maybe we at some marginal level even agree, precisely to remind me of the risks, dangers of radical political I, experiments. I, I, you know, so I don't know what to make of what Slavoj is saying when he says that Stalin is there to remind him of the dangers of totalitarian, uh, uh, of the totalitarian uh, strain in the left, or of the dangers of uh, that uh, 
utopian ideas can lead to because he supports all the totalitarian movements in the world that I can see. Um, you're a supporter of uh, uh, the closest thing we have to Nazism, which was a, a utopian idea, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, you, you know, you support the Palestinians. I don't see uh, anything to distinguish the Palestinians who want to kill the Jews uh, from the Nazis. Listen, did you ever visit the West Bank? It's totally safe for Jews. I didn't, I, well, no, I didn't what I'm saying is that I went I there with my Jewish friends. It's I've safe. And I can tell you what I... I uh, it's, I'm not saying, I must emphasize this, I find uh, tasteless, these ideas, oh, what Nazis were doing to the Jews, the Jews are now doing to Palestinians. I agree, this is tasteless. But, sorry, Palestinians are there screwed up. Pretty yeah, strongly. they're screwed by Hamas. No, they're no, screwed no, by the PLO. no. Here they're I disagree. By Saudi Arabia. Here I they're disagree by with Egypt, the way with the way Israelis but, humiliated but Arafat and so on. Israeli policy opened up the space for Hamas influence there. Yeah. Second thing. Oh, oh we're going to blame the Jews for Hamas. Great. Oh, my God. You see, this is what I don't like oh, about right, right. you. My God. Whatever I say, I blame the Jews. <laughs> you know why? I, I, no, no. No, no. I, uh, I want, uh, no. Uh, seriously, just one thing. Look at the situation of women now in Iraq. Horribly, uh, this sound uh, is worse than right. under... Who's responsible for this? It's United the States with their, with their F3 it, points it's intervention. The international left and the Democratic Party in the United States that went to war for Saddam and against George Bush when he went into Iraq. We should have settled their hash. We should not have, uh, you know, we should have occupied them I'm, I'm, for I mean, several years. David, I mean, this is an in, incre incredible overnight. statement, though. We should have it's stuck it to Syria, and then we should have stuck it to Iran. But Bush came under a, such attack uh, from, from the Democrats. The, there's never been such a, a seditious movement by a major American party. They all supported the war. Not all of them, but the leadership supported the war. They voted in their majority in the Senate for the war. And then they turned against it, and they lied, saying that Bush lied. Bush couldn't have lied about the intelligence because Kerry and uh, Rockefeller and Feinstein, all the Democrats sat on the intelligence committees. They had better intelligence than Julian. In, in, in the work that we do, the work that WikiLeaks does, we are uh, pushing forwards the boundaries of a certain type of liberty that is, we say, protected by the First Amendment. That is the liberty to, to reveal the truth about the world, to protect the historical record from interference, and so on. I saw this incredible poster uh, that the U.S. Army produced, which is a poster of Jefferson, uh, say, with a big statue of Jefferson saying, the cost of liberty is eternal vigilance. That is the price of liberty. And it had uh, giant interception systems, people with guns and uh, the Coast Guard and uh, people looking out over the sea with, with spy glasses. They had interpreted Jefferson's statement which was that to stop a strong state, we must be eternally vigilant into. We must have a strong state, an aggressive state, a surveillance state in order we, to I, keep I, liberty. I, I, I think it's regrettable that the state is so big, that, uh, that our, our defense has to be so big. It's absolutely regrettable, but it's a reality. And, and you know, I'd like to go back to your thing about liberty and equality. Uh, of course, if people are unequal, if people have unequal talents, unequal uh, intelligence, then the only way to make them equal is to take away liberty. That's the only way you can do it. There's no other way. So, of course, there's an inherent conflict between a li uh, liberty listen, and equality. Listen, I'm not an idealist here in contrast what you think. I am not for total freedom, everything should be made public. But I think these WikiLeaks are not doing this. All I'm saying is when the way the great power structure, a certain level of hypocrisy is reached, then selectively, when simply, how to put it, uh, of course, we are always called to trust 
the state power in the sense of sorry we have to do certain things discreetly better that you don't know about it and i agree we have to play this game i'm not a stupid I, but when obviously this trust is misused things like wikileaks can play a very positive role yeah, sorry i don't see any danger of collapse if, 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 if the revolution if, the rev if, we, if we had a new revolutionary yeah. government yeah a new revolutionary government yeah. and wikileaks managed to get hold of the yeah, internal yeah. discussions yeah. of that government yeah and we were going to publish it I will answer your would, question. Would, 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 no, I, no, would I be, would you I be against agree the wall? with me? I cannot resist a joke here. You know what? It's too difficult for me to answer this question now when I will be part of this revolutionary government. I will send you my answer to your gulag cell in Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> the idea is or, it's got to be ordered liberty. It can't be. But every I, liberty is like, ordered in some sense. David, a, on the, the front, front of Guantanamo Bay, the slogan yeah. there is honor bound to defend freedom. In, yeah. in Iraq, there is a, a prison camp, Camp Liberty. These, to me, seem to be abuses of the word freedom. And I, I want to know from you, do you really think this tremendous state that is growing up in the United States, is that entirely necessary to combat the uh, rivalrous competition that the United States has from China, from Europe, or, or is this now a self-feeding system? It's, you know, there's, there's, people are the problem. People are the problem. They're greedy. They lie. They're deceitful. They manipulate. Uh, they, you know, they're egocentric. We, we understand that. And, and people in government are just the same dangerous people with more power. So that's why we have the checks and balances. And I'm, I'm all for, you know, more scrutiny and this and that. However, we live in a context. The United States and Israel are under attack from the international left, which is very powerful, from all these dictators in South America that Slavoj seems to get along with, uh, from the Islamo-fascists, uh, and we live in an age when they have nuclear weapons and chemical and biological. I think there's going to be an, a catastrophe that will dwarf everything that happened in the 20th century in the 21st because of this. Don't you, don't you see the, the creation of an enormous secretive bureaucracy doing each other favors, in, involved in uh, rotating door contracts, etc.? Yeah. Don't, don't you see that that perhaps can be similar to what occurred in the Soviet Union, and we need a strong if, Soviet Union. If we, if we eliminate the competition, but the fact of it, look, you got a leftist in the White House, a guy who was brought up and trained by communists, whose whole political career was in the communist left. You have the competition, uh, you know, you, you, you can't have what you think of this monolith and, and you know, the secret that controls and everything. You have... If you prefer, think of it as many mafias, and they're all at each other's throats, and that's what keeps us somewhat safe. Very, very briefly, you know, first let me state something without any anti-Americanism. The problem is countries like, like, like Russia, where they, 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 they can they, shut down the opposition. Yeah. I know Russia, you, you mean Putin. I know whom you mean, Russia, Putin. Isn't this the guy whom, when he met Bush, Bush said, you remember? I looked into Putin's eyes and I knew I can trust that guy, but this is just a, a footnote. What I'm that saying was, is that, that look, that was one look. one of the stupider things that Bush said. So yeah, I, thought it, I thought it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, let me go on. So, listen, I'm unfortunately, You're first I must on say, Russian you TV? use communist, you know that uh, communists uh, like to, to blur the true opposition to them, democracy, you must know this. Communists like to call everyone who opposes them fascists. If you did a modest democratic or oh, fascist counter-revolution. What I'm afraid is that you use the word communist in a slightly similar way. Whoever is a little bit of critical or American conservative establishment, he's a communist. Then, of course, well, you, Obama yeah, is a communist. Stop. They are all you're not referring. You're not referring to Barack Obama. Yes. Yeah. In what well, meaningful you, sense of you, the world he is a no communist? Idea then you have no idea of, of Barack Obama's background 
who he actually is, if you say that. Because this is not just about mild Well, criticism. I don't care about backgrounds. Stalin's background was a, a, a religious poet who wrote poems. I have some of them, as we both know. Let me go briefly on. Uh, but oh. don't you think that nonetheless, I think, and this is and you, you a tragedy, it's trials, not even a good, sorry, it's not even huh? a good thing, but don't you think that nonetheless, for me, the great failure of Bush presidency was that with his non, I wouldn't use the word aggressive, sometimes you need it, non-intelligent politics, that he, he, the result of his decade was that the United States effectively come, came close to losing the position of universal world power. Under Bush, you, United States, lost effectively control over Latin America and so on and so on. And I think, and this is not, I don't say it with some leftist glee, ooh, ooh, finally we got the United States, but I think we are entering, I even tend to agree with you, a very dangerous, multi-centered world. All these dreams that America will somehow regain control are, for me, over. And again, I'm not saying this with any, you know what I mean, of this... Very left. dangerous. Yeah, no, I agree. it is a dangerous world, there, I agree. The, the Point two, you know, Europe is not is so bad. Listen, let's face it. And for this, many leftists will accuse me of Eurocentrism or whatever. European welfare state dream, more than, if you permit me this European love, more than, I think, even United States dream. Wasn't this maybe the unique period in human history after World War II, the welfare state, where so many people live in such safety, uh, 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 freedom and so on. Don't make too much fun of Europe. It was a great thing as far as it lasted. Oh, and it was a disastrous period. Europe, Europe is a cultural theme park. It's insignificant. That's what happened. That's what your welfare state did. It just took Europe out of the picture. I, I have had personal, I have had personal experience with, with the socialist dream paradise of Sweden, and I can tell you it is nothing like the advertising. But it More wasn't 20, 30 years ago. I still insist on this. Something has broken there. Yeah, the, Swe the Swedes have no morals. D David, the striving towards utopia, the striving towards a better position, even if, even if that position is liberty, it is more liberty, that is a striving, a direction that people wish to have, that they can measure contemporary events by the direction of their hopes and ideals. H have we now abandoned that to religion, because religion is there waiting in the gap to, to, see, to seize oh, utopian vision. Religion. People can't live with, with the sense, most people can't live with the sense that their lives are meaningless, that they're just, you know, born and die and are forgotten. Uh, so if you're a religious person, then there's a divinity who's going to make, sort it out in the afterlife, their redemption in the next life. If you're not religious, you want a redemption in this life. That's what the left is about. It is a religious movement. And it's not an accident that all these is these utopianisms, whether it's uh, communism or fascism or Nazism. Or liberalism. Or, or what? Or liberalism. <laughs> it's also utopia. People have to want to make things better. So you, it may take a lot of ambition to make a, a, a modest change. So, um, you know, I'm trying to think of of, of one that would, would fit what you want to do. What you want to do, what you, you do is a, is a radical means that can have very destructive consequences. But there are moments be, when you uh, have to be, uh, look, uh, when you uh, have uh, Hitler uh, and Holocaust, but when you have, for example, Hitler and Holocaust, you don't say, oh, let's try to be friendly with that Nazi guy there, do it modestly. You have to, oh, there are moments when right. you have to be aggressive. I You're hope we agree. Right. I hope we we agree on this and, and about and all that utopia stuff. For me, my I'm position is a modest one. one. I see, as we all do, that we are approaching potential catastrophes. And all I I'm saying is, we should fully, consciously confront these catastrophes. No easy utopian bullshitting, okay, communist me, or me, liberal or whatsoever. Tie, let me try to tie up these discussions. Ah, he who wants to be general secretary, <laughs> Stalin, who at the end makes the re resume. He still is war, a communist. War, He's the communist here. what I was going to say. <laughs> war is the natural... War 
is the natural condition of mankind. There's always been wars, right, from, from the beginning, okay? And many of them. Peace occurs only when there's a concert of powers or a single power that can intimidate would-be aggressors. Now, I ask you, who would you like that power to be other than the United States? I don't know, but the United States is no longer even the candidate for me. And the United States, can, well, that's why, that's why we're facing such catastrophe, but you're contributing it by encouraging leftists. Isn't the way to keep the state accountable is to have a free market in states? You mean different political options? And different so political different, options. Yeah, yeah. And then people who don't like the conditions in one state can move to another state. They can move their businesses. They can move their assets. They, they can, can move their that. families. The United States is not equipped, to, as, as we showed in Iraq, we can't, we can't even occupy a country. We can, we can barely conduct a four-day war. That, that was a six-week one. And we're, 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 America is it's a country where people are so, uh, there's so much opportunity. People are so busy having fun. Uh, they don't want to go to war. Americans don't want to go to war. America, so, uh, America has to be lied into war. No, actually, it was Tony Blair that did that. The United States is crippled uh, in part because uh, its commander-in-chief is a leftist. Here I respectfully disagree, I'm serious. If the United States still have a certain attraction and so on to the world, I'm sorry to inform you, it is because of people like Obama who can succeed there. Four days into Obama's administration, he authorized his first drone strike in Pakistan. Who do you think Obama really is. What? So when he came into office, and actually when he was running, he knew that his weak flank was the, was, uh, the military. So he picked Pakistan. Uh, he has killed more civilians, and the left lets him get away with it. Because the left, because the left is a religious force. It has nothing to do with principle. The left doesn't care about uh, uh, Asians being, uh, you know, killed by drones, uh, you know. The, 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 what, what, is he, what, what does he want to do? Out in the streets protesting what Obama is doing in Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, you know, beyond, you know, I, I don't have any respect for leftists anymore because I don't think they're principled. You see, here is our difference. Obama. We are both critical but towards Obama. A, you are critical the, the towards him. You are critical towards Obama party. because you think he's a communist leftist. I'm critical towards Obama because, quite on the contrary, I think that he is not a secret closet leftist. He is not. He pretends to be a leftist. He is not. That's the problem. You don't know what you're talking about, Slavoj. Uh, you okay. know, I mean, I've listened to Tarek Ali. I mean, he hates uh, what Obama's doing. But that's just because there are leftists. Uh, this, left these are it. your old lef le leftist friends. Okay. But uh, Tarek Ali is not my friend. I don't buy this democratic left bull of, you know, local grassroots democracy, blah, blah, blah. All I'm saying is that the problem which gave rise to communism is still here with us. I'm afraid what happens no, if we don't that, find the solution. No, it isn't. The pro yeah, the problems are going to be here forever. Yeah, but, you know, there are problems that, and problems. That's, that's, the, that's a yeah, realistic but. view. Okay, let's... The, uh, let's, let's hold, let's, gentlemen, gentlemen... That we can we, change them... We have a lot of ground. We, we, we have a lot of ground. Point. We have a lot of ground. We are, we are two fanatics, <laughs> and he's a liberal trying to... We yeah. should maybe, all totalitarians, <laughs> come together to get rid of this liberal really here. We have a lot of ground to cover, and I, I do want to cover it, okay? So, um, David... You were in the Black Panthers, uh, and you stayed in the Black Panthers post... Uh, well, Q Q no, e I was never a member. I, I, I raised money for you it. You helped them. Uh, you, were, yeah. you were involved in their activities, and, and you supported them. Yes. Uh, you, you were like even... those bankers who helped Hitler, no, if I yeah. may. It was a metaphor. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. And, and you brought in a bookkeeper from the then Ramparts magazine, uh, which, you, who, which you were editing, um, Betty Van Pater. And I just want to draw your attention <coughs> to a, a letter that was sent uh, to you. Um, in my mind, you were the person responsible for Betty's death. Sending her in to audit the Panthers' books at this particular time was tantamount to dressing her in a Ku Klux Klan white yeah, sheet and sending Julian, her up to... Julian, this isn't... This isn't I mean, that's just 
a slanderous letter by a bitter guy, uh, you know, who actually was involved with the Panthers before I was and never said anything. Um, the left will defend the cause and will sacrifice any individual. In this case, it was me. Um, if D David, do you think this this tragedy? I mean, you, you were involved in a in a murder. Yeah. I mean, a mur murder was around you. This is something of great personal importance to you, and it must have affected your your outlook on the world. But uh, do you think that you that this opened your eyes to the reality, or rather, it coloured your perception? Well, I, I was very aware of that. So Betty was killed in. Uh, or her body was discovered in February 1975. Um, I, re I didn't do anything politically after that for the next uh, uh, nine years. I voted for Reagan in 1984, and that's when I emerged as a conservative. Of course, I came under tremendous attack from the left, but I hadn't said anything uh, uh, I was going to say I haven't said anything negative. I hadn't done any political activity attacking the left in all those nine years because I was very aware that, that I I was, uh, you know, I felt I had been betrayed uh, by the movement. I felt guilty um, at what I had supported. Um, so I, I waited till I was uh, relatively cool. I mean, you know, it's in your character to... <laughs> if you're uh, passionate or not. But, uh, but David, yeah. you, st you started writing biographies after ben Betty Von Peter's right. death uh, into Rockefellers and other big American families. Right. I mean, when you started writing all those biographies, did you interview members of those well-connected families? Yes. You moved into a new social orbit as a result no. of your no, biography. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I really have remained pretty much the same all my life. I, I, I didn't move into any new orbits. I mean, I did, I did, I had to, I lost every friend that I ever had as, as a leftist and that was in midlife. So I had, a, I reconstituted my, my friendships. I think that's a, a big factor that keeps people in the left is that they know that if they cross a line, they're gonna lose their, all their friends. <laughs> Hunting what? Yeah, just as. To... Okay, okay. All right, sorry about that. No problem. I am for Go communism ahead. with human face, where you will be allowed to do this. <laughs> Got you. No, you seriously, know, just not to, to put down activism or what you do at all. I have to go to universities with bodyguards because of the fascist left in this country. I have assassination threats all over. I'm the only guy in this yeah, room who was physically assaulted by right-wingers to be a communist oh, and by on. communists on, to be a traitor to nationalists. So, Come on, come on. Yeah, no, I'm not That's kidding. David, who, who will you be voting for uh, in the upcoming election? Well, we don't have a candidate yet. Well, I mean, want, amongst, the no. ca amongst the candidates. Oh, I, I, I think Romney has the best chance to beat this guy. To beat, to beat Obama. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy with anybody. I agree here with you. It's very tragic and really maybe even bad in the long term for the vitality of the United States that Republican Party, it looks to me like this, simply wasn't able to produce a candidate which would have enough drawing force and so on. It's very sad. I agree. I don't, I'm not happy about this. Um, I agree. It's, it's too bad. Th thank you, David Horowitz. Sorry? No visiting. He's you. a secret. No, no, he's even it. worse than a communist. He's a socialist with a human face. Probably. This is the lowest but form of existence. The, Socialism with a human face the is the lowest the form. It's like victim. frogs crawling the there. A victim of these. <laughs> okay, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye bye. Okay, my God, let's. Uh, but you know, you have to do a little bit of Stalinist work. This was madness. You know what I mean. <laughs> my idea is, they put you on a plane. The union should say we will not fly if you are or something like this. You know. 
So I, I think it's time to, to raise the stakes. Audio, audio turned on. Let's turn this off, the desktop, and throw the chat back on. Fun, fun, good discussion. And uh, someone asked the question, who was the person's name? It's um, Hold on, let me get the name. The person. This is this is the episode. Uh, David Horowitz. I think David Horowitz was out of his mind. Uh, the guy's the guy's confused to say the least. And here's a link to the discussion. And uh, the two people that were in this discussion were. Let me just grab. Over these two people, okay. Slavo Zizek, I don't know how to pronounce that, okay. And David Horowitz, and David Horowitz, I think, was out of his mind. Uh, Chicho, uh, sleepy ways. I literally don't even know what we watched, to be honest. It was a discussion supposedly about uh, the left and the right, but um, David Horowitz was confused. He's, he's like. He's basically saying human nature is to kill, and the only way to reduce the amount of killing is to put the biggest killer in power. That way, no one will uh, will try to remove the biggest killer in power, and the biggest killer in power can kill anybody they want, and then you'll have less killing. That's what basically his argument is. That's what basically any any of the arguments of people that think that uh, um, a, a, an empire is the way to be right meta dragons finally david can go call his wife back <laughs> hilarious fun conversation to listen to. fun conversation to listen to fun conversation to listen to slavo jezek slavo jezek slavo jezek and david horowitz horror david horowitz <laughs> Green Jenny. That's pretty much the argument of Hobo's uh, uh, Leviathan. Hobbes Leviathan. I don't know that one. I don't know what that refers to. And hello, Green Jenny. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, good discussion. Good discussion. Uh, interesting. Some things that came up, which is uh, any criticism uh, that came up and... Uh, Zhajek totally lost it when the guy says, Oh, blame the Jews, the Horowitz says. And Zhajek's like, Jesus, that's the argument. That <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, Green Jenny, uh, the star star. I'm assuming you're trying to provide a link. Only me and the mods can uh, link things up. Uh, just because we've had trolls in the past that they're trying to do phishing scams. So we prevented people from linking, providing links. But you're welcome to go to our Discord and provide links. This is our, no, that's okay. Uh, this is our Discord page, so you can definitely share information there if you'd like. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, and that was regarding Hobbes' uh, Leviathan. I've heard it, it's ringing a bell, but I can't place it. Uh, Meta Dragons, the left is a religious <laughs> institution. It's a comment I will not soon forget. I know, I'm just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious as if uh, as if like i don't know it's crazy frank he sees chicho did you see the mess at kabul airport for, yeah for sure saigon moment indeed we've linked up the articles and some pictures on our discord page in the politics right saigon moment many of us some of us in 2001 when they decided to go into afghanistan or they officially stated that they were going to go into afghanistan we knew the saigon moment was coming we just didn't know how long it was going to take i'm surprised it took 20 years right well once once we found out what the cost was they they pumped in six i think the number was six trillion dollars of u.s taxpayer money six trillion dollars of u.s taxes have been and will be 
when all said and done spent on the occupation of Afghanistan. Now, I'm pretty sure Americans would have liked to done something different with that six trillion dollars. So the reason it took 20 years for the Saigon moment to come was because they dropped six trillion dollars of U.S. taxes there. Right? In full sphere, Hobbes was an economist and philosopher from the colonial era, I believe. Ah, that's what it was. Okay, okay, okay. See, with Chicho, thank you for that. Uh, Chicho, this is what plagues America still, though, that the right feels that the left is deceitful and un useless, and the liberals will turn a blind eye to the crimes of Democrats. Indeed. And the, and the left thinks the, all the conservatives are religious psychopaths, which they're not, right? Uh, honestly, I just identify as some sort of radical left individual to distinguish from liberals. Uh, for me, I, I identify as a human being. I, I don't identify as left or right or any spectrum that the propagandist wants to put people in into the uh, the little box, right? If it, whenever people ask me, "Are you left or right?" I go, I don't, I don't even understand what the question means. Like, you know, left and right of what? <laughs> right? Frankie says, "Yeah, didn't think it would take twenty years either. All of that." to stop terrorism well th there was a there was a point that was they were trying to go in there to free the women just the bullshit they feed people <laughs> our emotes <laughs> no no i think we had we picked good emotes man no name boy for when he said obama was trained by god <laughs> i literally imagine obama doing push-ups in a gulag <laughs> Obama was was a right wing fanatic, mass murdering piece of shit. Uh, left? What left? Just because someone says they're left doesn't mean they're left. It reminds me of Mars Attacks, the movie with uh, the, the the funny movie, right? The Martians were came down to Earth, and the translator was saying, "We come in peace," and they're blowing everybody up. It doesn't mean they come in peace when they're killing people. It doesn't mean someone's left when they're right. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Hilarious. Shout outs Bush uh, on the carrier with the mission accomplished banner. Yeah, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable, right? Imagine if you told them that in 2001, are you willing to drop six trillion on this war? That's the kicker. Most people didn't get it. We, I don't know. I knew it was going to cost a ton of money it was going to take years and when it was it was said and done the united states was going to collapse it was obvious afghanistan is the empire killer and it just destroyed the american empire cheryl 100 percent uh, and now we're in the next chapter i just wish i knew the book title uh which book title oh the book title oh the book title cheryl Oof. I don't know. I don't know what the title of this book is going to be, but what a ride, what a ride. Maybe that's what the title is going to be, right? Oh, they got six trillion for a better government, maybe. Well, I don't know, brother. I don't know. Six trillion dollars. Meanwhile, <laughs> what a Oregon governor just said there, pe people graduating high school will not be mandated will not will not have to be able to read and write or do mathematics you know why that's because they spent six trillion dollars killing people in afghanistan and occupying that unbelievable man meta dragons in a couple of words could you describe the backbone of what the saigon moment is the saigon moment is when in 1975 when uh, the united states was the decision was made and they were pulling out all their troops and there was a whole bunch of uh, Vietnamese collaborators that had helped uh, the United States wage war on Vietnam, right? They were from the, uh, what do you call it? Not the communist part of Vietnam, but the other part of Vietnam that France, the United States took over after France said they were going to go. The United States said, we'll take over, right? So the Saigon moment is the day when the Vietnamese, the communists, um, were coming into Saigon, 
right? We're exactly what's going on right now. The Taliban is coming into Kabul, right? Full force. They're coming in, man. We're, we're <laughs> it's a flood, right? Meanwhile, American thought this was going to be a slow maneuver, right? So they weren't really prepared with how fast things were rolling. So there was helicopters from, um, what do you call it? Um, aircraft carriers flying into the American embassy in Saigon to airlift people out of Saigon, right? The Americans, all of them, right? And there was a whole bunch of collaborators that had surrounded the American embassy and they were all trying to get in and trying to hop into a helicopter to escape to the United States before the Northern Vietnam took over because they were going to kill anybody that collaborated with the Americans, right? Because they helped kill Vietnamese, right? They helped an occupying force kill Vietnamese. Right or wrong, I don't, I don't care which side of the branch you lay on, they collaborated with an occupying force to kill their own people. They were collaborators. Collaborators, when something like this happens, their heads are on the chopping block and there's going to be a lot of bloodshed in Afghanistan because of this, right? That's the Saigon moment. The Saigon moment is there's a picture of a helicopter landing on American embassy in Saigon on the roof of the American embassy in Saigon to airlift people out, right? There's a picture of American helicopter landing in the courtyard. It's not landing on the roof of the embassy in Kabul, but landing in the courtyard, American embassy or the airport, I think it's American embassy, to airlift people out of Afghanistan. In this situation, there aren't going to be as many Afghanis allowed to escape their, um, their fate as there were Vietnamese that were allowed to escape. Okay. That's the Saigon moment. That's the Saigon moment. What do you make of well, Durant, uh, Durant Civilization book series? I don't know it, uh, Dada. Joe, Chicho, it feels like everyone has a different idea of what it means to be left or right. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Ok, ok, ok. Frankie, Sleepy Waves, Chicho, how long has WikiLeaks been around? WikiLeaks uh, came online first, I believe, in 2008, 2009. Uh, 2008, I believe. Cheryl, I'll order an advanced copy. Uh -huh. Dada, do you think Trump makes a comeback? Uh, possibly. Kitetsu, the title of the stream is part one. Oh, I forgot to change the title. Crap, thank you very much for that. It should be part two. I changed the title part two um, when uh, I announced it, but I forgot to change it in the description. Thank you very much for that. I'll change it once the stream is over. 29th April 1975 the Saigon moment Oregon keeps going downhill yep down the toilet it goes down the toilet it goes and for a period it was pretty expensive to live in Portland people were raving uh, about Portland great city to live in and then we'll see where that ends up right spectral shot yeah there's a reason why over half of the state of Oregon is trying to join Idaho yeah yeah green Jenny and now Vietnam is one of our trade partners and an ally against China in, in the religious uh, regional hegemony. Uh, Vietnam history is uh, quirky. History is quirky indeed. But I wouldn't call Vietnam an ally of the United States against China. Vietnam wants to be an independent country doing whatever they want without outside influence. That was the f goal of Vietnam from day one when they resisted the occupation of uh, European colonial powers first and then United States. Vietnam does not want to be controlled by anyone. Vietnam wants to decide its own destiny, just like any peoples in this world, right? So uh, that's the way it is. And just imagine Camilla Harris went back to Vietnam, went to Vietnam last week or a couple of weeks ago and announced to the Vietnamese, America is back. This is the 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 intelligence level of the American administration to fly into Vietnam on a diplomatic mission and say, America is back. America's back, you sons of bitches. What are you talking about? 
How about a little respect, right? Like Vietnam, like America hasn't paid retribution for the Agent Orange that they dumped all over there or anything like this, right? So it is what it is, right? Meta Dragons, thank you so much. I've been trying to discern what the relationship has been for days now, and that clarified something for me. Thank you for for the date, Elagon. Awesome, and that's regarding the Saigon moment. Our pleasure, uh, Meta Dragons, and thank you, Elder God, for the date as well, right? If you like Durant, you'll love uh, Tobni, Toy Toynbee, Toynbee. Hi, Chicho. Hi, Ronnie. How are you doing, uh, Joe? Uh, it was a launch on fourth uh, October two thousand and six. Awesome. Thank you very much, Joe. So two thousand and six is when WikiLeaks came online. I started blogging in two thousand and five. Very cool. I uploaded my first video in two thousand and seven, I believe. Right, Ronnie. I'm in New York, and it's so ridiculous how expensive houses are now. Uh, rent prices in New York are dropping. New York's going to be gutted, man. New York's, uh, you know, I hate to say this about your city, brother, but New York's turning into a shithole. Right? New money is leaving New York up the yin yang. People are going to be taxed up the yin yang. Uh, New York bringing in a vaccine, a shot passport, businesses closing. New York is going back to the age of the 70s, most likely, with crime going through the roof, right? Which would be okay. It was great for artists and stuff. But unfortunately, it's not going to be going in down that direction. It's going to be more a police city, police state, right? An experiment and uh, gulag, <laughs> not a gulag, but uh, a prison system, right? King Canada Life, it's a mental here in Ontario as well. Even in uh, super small towns, yeah, crazy King Canada Life. It's pure fascism what's being rolled out. I don't like it. Uh, and it's money laundering that's taking place. Wall Street is buying up tons of property. Um, New York house prices will, will drop. That's my guess. Big, big uh, apartment price prices. MC Mike, never go full limit heart <laughs> looking your way so for yeah funny no problem dates dates are my thing elder guy uh, ronnie it's affecting where i want to work because i want to buy a decent looking house that's not one million dollars usd uh ronnie uh maybe just rent for a bit and see where prices go right uh, mind you house prices are up because of wall street because of the trillions of dollars that have given been given to wall street in the last year right they've given it to wall street to fund managers to uh, to the wealthy to the banks to buy property and turn american citizens into serfs uh, there are ways out of this uh, but it will be costly Green Jenny, Vietnam wanting to be independent is exactly why they're uh, valuable to the U.S. against China. Yeah, and China can play them against the uh, U.S. as well, right? It's th there are there are bullies right now trying to control other countries and other economies, and the smart ones, the countries that are governed properly, the people are aware, are telling both the bullies. Or all the bullies to go f themselves right oh we're up to almost two hours gang i'm um, a lot of chat i'm scrolling down gang uh sleepy boys what are your thoughts uh, on the taliban i don't really i uh, they're religious uh, i wouldn't want to live under them it's crazy talk right but it's people's right to live under whatever they want right it's not my my place to tell people across the world uh, what system they should function under it's my place to decide what i want to function under my country where i live no no name boy chicho do you have more streams scheduled yeah we got two tomorrow i'm uh from uh, portugal and been following your work on youtube for a while now and this was the first live stream i watched uh watched of you on twitch yeah for sure and thank you for coming on twitch to watch the live stream thank you for following the work on sensor tube uh youtube uh we do have two streams tomorrow uh same time that 
the one started today and two uh, four hours earlier so tomorrow we got two more julian assange ones we're gonna look we're gonna watch two more episodes from julian assange's the world tomorrow one starting at 10 a.m my time and you guys are about eight hours ahead of me okay so that would put you at 6 p.m and then the next one is going to be 2 p.m my time pacific west coast canada which would put it at 10 p.m your time i believe okay there's a very little free assange do boom 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 definitely tweaking 100 percent boing most 100 percent i missed it sleep with you this is a little off topic but do you think that in today's economy and social media war world we are breeding nar narcissistic people um we're breeding all types of people um and some of these things are just 15 minutes of a fact they're blips they're going to change uh, i think we're we're breeding a lot of people that are becoming aware of the current state of affairs in regards to politics and economics and that's a good thing and education and everything and that's a good thing right green jenny sleepy waves that was the consensus about people in 1920s radio newspaper novel etc a culture of narcissism yeah really is that what it was uh, green jenny you still spelled it wrong bomb <laughs> cheryl well friend it's actually spelled motherfuckers <laughs> Cheryl, love it. Cheryl steps in, clears it all out. Gang, let's call the stream. Fantastic couple of streams today. We're gonna to do two more tomorrow. If you're around, uh, we'll be glad to have you. Gang, if you wanna know what this work is about, I am on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash chicho c h y c h o. If you wanna support this work, if you wanna follow this work, if you wanna know what we're all about, Patreon is a great way to do so. I don't put anything behind paywall. Everything's creative commons. Share, share, like, gang, and it's all layered on mathematics. And for those of you that are supporting this work on Patreon, gang, thank you very much for the support. We are live streaming on Twitch. If you want to participate in the chat, Twitch is where you want to be at, gang. And for those of you that are working this, supporting this work on Twitch, gang, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it. And mods, thank you for taking care of business i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on mines vk gap parlor bitcloud and getter okay you can follow the work there and you can come to our twitch channel anytime you want type an exclamation mark social and most of those links will pop up including our discord link down here where we have a discord server where people are sharing information and you're definitely welcome to join us there as well we do upload the audio of live streams when we don't have any visuals and we're not listening to audio off the laptop um, to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o as a podcast and those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this live stream to sensor tube to pitch to rumble and to odyssey and gang Thank you very much for the support on all these platforms. And never forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange on WikiLeaks playlist on SensorTube. I'll see you guys tomorrow, gang, if you can make it. Bye for now.